In case you missed our last gas video, we got our propane tank set and did the whole underground portion of the gas line. That included trenching, making a pad for the tank, and setting the risers that go up into the house. Now it's time to finish the indoor portion of the system and pressure test it in preparation to hook up to the tank. Let's talk about the manifold I'm building for just inside the house. It's one inch black iron to continue the pipe from the outside. Then there's a main shutoff ball valve followed by a one by three quarter by three quarter reducing T to go to both the water heater and the stove. All of these threaded connections get a layer of extra thick PTFE tape meant for gas piping to help them seal up, followed by a layer of blue pipe dope. I found that this combination creates a leak-free seal most of the time. I got most of these parts on supplyhouse.com. I found their prices typically beat out the big box stores and the specialty trade supply stores. They're a really great resource for a DIYer like me trying to do this trade type work. They have a lot of really specialty plumbing stuff plus two day shipping in my area. So that's pretty tough to beat. This is a pre-assembled gas sediment tee. It has this spot in the bottom basically that you can open the cap and clean any dirt that comes in and it prevents gas from transferring dirt up into your, uh, into your appliance. In our case, a very expensive water heater. And it comes with this flexible connector. This is a three quarter inch hose and it'll go from the appliance to our black iron pipe T. Voila, we have a gas manifold. I have this connected temporarily with my flex line here and I'm going to use this to sort of mock up where I, where I wanna put my hole through the wall. The only other thing I gotta be thinking about with this is we are gonna be putting stone veneer on the outside of this wall. And it's gonna be three foot high, which is about the height of this top pipe here. So right above that stone veneer, we're gonna have a piece of drip edge. And then above that, I wanna have all my mechanical penetrations in this room coming out of a piece of eight inch tall AZEC. I don't wanna put any siding and have to be drilling through fiber cement siding and then caulking around all the mechanical penetrations. I want a piece of AZEC that will be flashed by itself with another piece of drip edge above it and all of my holes are gonna be coming through that. I have to have a gas manifold, disconnects for the AC units, a generator plug, two hose bibs, and an outdoor outlet. So we have a bunch of holes that are gonna be made in this wall. And not only do I want them to be nice and waterproof, but I want them to look good from the outside and not look like it was unplanned. So when I mark things like this out, I'm thinking in the back of my head, like where are my AC line sets gonna come through? Am I gonna interfere with any of the water lines coming off that manifold? and just how I'm gonna route everything. Now, the reason I have the top of this manifold is this is going to be going all the way to our stove on the other side of the house. I'm gonna have a piece of CSST flex line to do that. One other thing to note is this manifold's not quite complete. I just have a plug in the bottom here, but I'm going to be putting what's called a sediment leg or a drip leg, and essentially it captures any dirt or debris that might be in the stream of gas. When the gas comes in through the house, it has to take a 90 degree turn upwards, and basically all of the heavy dirt will fall downwards. So I'll put a piece of three inch pipe down here and a cap on it, and that will be my drip leg. Got my hole location marked, my spider hole saw bit loaded up. Let's drill it. I'm through the first layer and I've got this wall insulated. So I'm gonna to try to be really careful in not tearing my insulation up and just kind of cutting a clean hole straight through it. Seems to be doing a good job. Hello, hello, is anyone in there? To keep this thing sturdy in the wall, I fabricated this little block here and I have a one inch pipe clamp. These are actually copper, but I coated it in some vinyl electrical tape. Don't wanna to touch dissimilar metals because that causes corrosion. But once I get this screwed in here, that should hold this thing nice and plumb and from any major movement in and out of the wall. They make these pipe standoff clamps for this, but honestly, I don't think they're gonna be as sturdy as what this is. I like the way they look, no doubt, but there's just nothing sturdy than a block of wood and a pipe clamp. Yep, that's awesome. I mm, guess the bottom could be better. I might add another one down here. That would probably be a good idea. I have to leave some room up here for my grounding strap. That is an important part putting in gas lines. Don't want lightning to be igniting your gas. That's what this little piece is for here. This will go around my pipe. And then I have a number six green copper wire that will go in under that little screw. I'll route that all the way back to the main electrical panel and bond it to the ground lug there. I sealed the pipe to the sheathing on the outside with some zip liquid flash. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do this for all the penetrations through my trim board, but I thought I might as well while I can access this one. Just as I sealed that pipe up, lo and behold, it started pouring rain down. So I'm not gonna be doing any more outside gas work, 
But the only things I got left to finish this up are bonding this to the electric panel and putting this little drip leg in, which I can pretty much do anytime. So let's ground this pipe. I'm gonna be using this sandpaper to remove the black coating from the pipe in this little section here underneath my valve. And then I'll run my number six green copper wire here. This is just standard old THHN wire and that will go right over to my panel. I've used this thing forever and I just recently now adapted it to one inch pipe so I can screw this right on my other riser here and we'll be able to test the whole system. Before we make this pressure test official, there's one more thing I gotta put in here, which I'm greatly struggling to put together with this ancient pipe wrench, uh, but that's my sediment leg. So this little piece of pipe here basically just kind of hangs out and does nothing its whole life except catch dirt that comes into the piping system from the outdoor gas pipe. This is, this is struggle bus right here. I either need a vise or a real pipe wrench. You know what? Why don't I just use these channel locks like a smart person would? I got the right tool sitting right next to me. Sometimes you just gotta get out of your own way. Look at that. It's the right tool for the job. Ugh. All right, let's put this on. Hope she doesn't leak. I ran out of the heavy duty gas tape. So yes, I used white tape on this. Please don't crucify me in the comments. Well done. The second leg of my gas system will come off this nipple here. It's gonna be a flexible run of CSST, corrugated stainless steel tubing. I'm just gonna leave this valve closed for now so I can test everything from here down, everything that's outdoors all the way up to this water heater. Then I can backfill out there without worrying too much and then I can do a second pressure test just for the CSST line before we actually hook up the propane. The moment of truth. I'm just gonna go to 10 PSI. The actual system is like a half a PSI so it really doesn't need much. All right, let's go check on our pressure gauge and see how we're doing here. What do we have here? We went from 10 to 30. I'm just kidding, I added a little bit more. I didn't think 10 was a whole lot, especially if I was gonna try to detect any leaks. I went up to 20 and within like half an hour, it was down to like 18. So I knew that there was a small leak somewhere. And now I went up to 40 and like an hour later, it's down to 30. So I definitely have a leak. We're gonna have to figure out where it's at. I have a suspicion that it's at the big union right in front of the house. I never have luck getting these unions to seal. So that's suspect number one. Through some additional YouTubing, I also learned that you're not supposed to pressure test with just the ball valve. Even though these valves say they're rated to 250 PSI, so 30 PSI pressure should be nothing. Apparently you can get like little micro leaks out of these. So you should only use plugs or caps on the end of all your gas lines when you're doing the initial pressure test. So I'm going to finish running the CSST line, my flexible stainless line here. That's got a plug up at the box. My flexible connector for the boiler here, I'll take that off and I can plug that line by itself. And then I think we can narrow it down to maybe it's just that union or it was something in here. I took a look at our chief architect design and laid out the kitchen with some basic tape. This thing right here is the stove. And so what I've got is this little OD gas box and it's pretty handy. It basically just recesses the gas line back into the wall. Just gives it a nice, neat, clean appearance and lets you push the stove back all the way to the wall. So I'm just gonna come straight down through this bottom plate here, try to avoid the double LVL that's right underneath this thing. And then I should be able to route this all the way back to the, uh, to the utility room. I did some basic math and I think it's gonna be around a 65 foot run. That's why I'm running three quarter inch CSST even though this is a half inch appliance connector. With that long of a run, the math said to use three quarter inch. This is my LVL marked out right here. So as much as I'd like to go through the plate in the middle, I don't really wanna compromise that beam. So I'm gonna come near the edge here. I'm just gonna have to make sure to put a nail plate on down here. Kinda of gonna go at an angle too because I feel like that'll help my case out a little bit. Literally missed it within an eighth of an inch. That's good stuff. That beam is right there on the other side of that hole. This is probably the funnest camera angle I think I've ever made. We're coming on this side of the wall because 
I'm going to be softening the ceiling down just in this small area right here because our trunk duct for our HVAC system is going to run here. So I'm going to run as many pipes and wires in this area as I can. That way I don't have to be constantly drilling through ceiling joists and stuff like that. I'm going to be just wrapping all of this with some 2 by and drywall and we're going to call it a day. If I've learned anything on this project, it's that when you're uncoiling something, you unroll it. Do not just grab it and pull because you will end up with a coiled mess. One of the hardest parts of this job is just moving around in this spot when we have so many materials in one place. I guess that's part of the curse of being an owner builder and having like 85 projects going on at once is you have to have all the materials here. And so even just moving the scaffolding around to run this gas line, I'm just like, ugh. CSST is corrugated stainless steel tubing. Every brand is a little bit different in how it connects, but they basically work on the same O-ring sealing principle. But the flexibility is really nice because you don't need to have any discontinuities or joints in a really long span. The instructions laid out really clearly how it's all assembled. And of course, for my three quarter inch run, I needed a bushing to reduce down to my half inch connector on the outlet box. To fasten the line down, I used the same one inch clamps I used on the gas manifold, and I put those no more than every three foot or so. Let's bring her up and over. Oh, shit. <laughs> Come on, third time's the charm, baby. Let's go. This is what happens when you don't unroll. You get that. The only reason I can get away with running this gas pipe along the top plate of this wall and through this opening in that way is because I'm gonna be softening out this whole area right here because my main duct trunk line is gonna come through here too. Otherwise, you'd have to be putting drywall up against this and it just wouldn't work. So that's also why we left this thing out of here too, this piece of cripple. I'll probably put it back in once we get the duct in, but we knew that there was gonna be duct work coming through here, so I didn't bother nailing this in and I was gonna have to cut it out later. The scaffold's come in super handy being able to scoot along the wall like this and I'm going to try scooting under this door. Really, really, really handy until you hit an extension cord on the ground. <laughs> All right, it appears that I measured pretty good in the plans when I got this, because this is all I got left, maybe six feet, and this is where I'm gonna cut it. Don't wanna cut it too short, because that would be an issue. Luckily, you can cut this stuff with a good old-fashioned copper tubing cutter. Just be careful, because I've already cut myself on this stainless once. It is sharp, just like any sheet metal is. Finally. Actually left a cleaner cut than I was expecting. Got my tube stripped here. And as always, I got my instructions in hand. Never too proud to read the instructions. It saved me from a lot of stupid mistakes and a lot of rework. But don't get me wrong, I still do plenty of rework. First step, nut. Second step, split ring, solid ring on. Slide that baby up there and roll this nice little red O-ring on without cutting the heck out of yourself. Gave myself some wiggle room up top so I can sort of push this up and then pull it down. That's how that looks. Got the split ring, the solid ring, then the O-ring right up against the end of the fitting here. Quarter to half turn. That's a quarter. I'll give it three eighths. Three eighths. Three, three eighths of a turn. Okay, let's hope she's sealed. Here's the whole run. The best part about CSST is I don't have to worry about any leaks other than the beginning and the end. Now, of course, it could get damaged along the run, but as long as I'm careful, that shouldn't be an issue. I just love undoing work simply to redo it again. It's like one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> I'm almost gonna put money that this is the culprit. Actually looks pretty well sealed. Maybe my pipe dope actually hurt me on this. I have no idea. I'm gonna clean it off. Now, if you're a plumber watching this, you've probably already cringed that I'm using black iron outside. I was between black iron and galvanized and I did some reading on it and I don't think it really matters that much. Both of them you have to paint anyway and this stuff's a little bit less expensive. So I figured I would just go with the black iron. But yes, you can see I was lazy and didn't paint it 
uh, right after I installed it. So a couple rains later and there's already some surface corrosion on it. Not really a huge deal. I'm just gonna scotch bright it off before I paint it. I had heard a couple things about the galvanized pipes, the insides of them flaking off. I don't know how much truth there is to that. Those flakes hopefully get caught in the sediment trap, but maybe they end up in your appliances. So I figured I would rather just go with the black iron and not have to deal with that and then just paint it. All right, hopefully second time's the charm. Yes, I know you're not supposed to put this on, but I think it helps more than it hurts though. Maybe I'll try to put it on a little bit thicker than the last time. That's the double grunt tightness. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully this goes better than the first time. As they say, second time's the charm. Something makes me think there's gonna be a third time. I'm taking it up to 40, why the heck not? All right, it's been like two hours since I pumped this thing up to 40 PSI and we're sitting at a healthy 30 PSI now. So I definitely have a micro leak somewhere, but I have a secret weapon to figure this out. Big blue, brush on micro leak detector. I've never even heard of this stuff until I just started Googling how to find small leaks in gas piping. And apparently this will foam up even at very, very small amounts of air leakage. So we're gonna give it a shot. All right, got to ratchet it up to 60 PSI. Now I'm just gonna start dobbing on every single joint in here with my big blue. It says it can, and then it says allow up to 30 minutes for foam to appear. Somehow this chemical will detect leaks and foam up where open water can't. I sincerely hope that it's not leaking around these fittings. That would be a real pain, but I'm gonna dab on anyway. Frankly, I don't understand how you're supposed to brush this on and not have foam and bubbles, but I guess we'll see what it looks like in a little bit and see if any of this is extra foamy. Oh my gosh. I think I found it. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, now I understand Big Blue. They are legitimately super bubbles. That is so crazy. All right, I'm gonna try tightening that up. And would you look at that? Little leak on the CSST. I've actually heard this is a very common issue. You kind of just need to back this off and retighten it and it usually will seal right up. But that is definitely a tiny leak. This is literally bubbles on steroids. All right, I depressurized, fixed those couple leaks. Well, I don't know if I fixed them, but I retightened the fittings anyway. I'm back up to 60 PSI, moment of truth. Let's unleash Big Blue back on our joints that were leaking. Okay, I think I fixed the leak that was there anyway, cause that was pretty immediate. Not sure about this guy though. Once I knew this outdoor pipe wasn't leaking, I figured I could go ahead and paint it. So I cleaned it all up with a Scotch-Brite pad and wire brush, then wiped everything down with acetone, masked it off. Just kidding. And painted with a can of gray Rust-Oleum. This should match the stone veneer beneath pretty decently. Doesn't seem to go on very thinly. It goes on quite thick. Uh-oh. We're clogged. Oh, come on. Oh my gosh. This is a brand new can of spray paint. Kidding me? Somehow I was just barely able to get that can started with that little tiny wire brush over there. But thankfully we got her going and I'm gonna consider this painted. As you can see, I was busy last night here putting some backfill in this trench. Started off with some stone dust, followed with a tracer wire, then some more stone dust, then our caution burial tape, and then finally our clean fill dirt. I'm using some of that two inch minus dirt that we imported for the septic system. And in this area here, we're gonna be putting the condensers for the AC. I have a concrete pad I'm gonna set here. And so I've been tamping that down by hand just in this little area as I've been backfilling this trench. All right, so the pressure test has been holding for 30 PSI for a few days at least. I'm pretty confident we have no leaks. So I've hooked our water heater back up to the main line here. I took the cap off of this and the gas company is here. They're hooking up the tank to the outside. They're gonna run their own low pressure test with just tank pressure. They said it can find leaks even better than my gauge can. So we'll see, this is the moment of truth. So that's like a flexible copper, yeah. half inch. Yep, yeah. uh, this is five eighths. Oh, five ace, yep. gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Just like brake lines. Mm -hmm. 
Calibrated two bender right there. Awesome. <laughs> I like it. Bada bing, bada boom. We got gas hooked up officially. The guys hooked up their special tool to their regulator, did a, a low pressure drawdown test to do the final leak test when it was already hooked up to the hot water heater and we are good to go. I gotta call them back when we hook the stove up to do that final leak test. But we are holding pressure and I am ready to turn that hot water heater on and get some heat in this slab. Hey, hello, we got a leak. Why am I leaking there? Fourth time is the charm. I think that's how the saying goes. Let's do this. <laughs> 